Gershman? What the hell are you doing here, Gershman? Red Velvet! Red Velvet! Birthday. How's your classical repertoire knowledge? <laughs> like orchestra? It's okay. Depends. Yeah. Are you familiar with Gershwin? Yeah, yeah. I, I know like everything Gershwin. Okay, then you'll know this. All right. I can already guess. I feel like it's Rhapsody in Blue. <laughs> 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 yeah. Sorry, did I spoil it? <laughs> Get ready to party and pop the champagne, everyone, because it's our sponsor's birthday! For the past 11 years, NordVPN has made sure that their users have had a happy experience browsing safely online. NordVPN is a virtual private network that has an array of features that keep you safe online. Not only does it keep your personal data safe by masking your online presence, but it also shields you from web trackers and intrusive ads, scans your files for malware, and warns you about potentially dangerous websites. But keeping you safe online isn't all it can do. If you're tired of the limited selection available on streaming services, NordVPN can give you endless options. By connecting to one of their servers all over the world, you can access content only available in other countries, bringing your streaming experience to the next level. I don't know about you, but this feature makes me feel so high, oh my gosh, like it's all a gift. If you listen closely, you can hear our sponsor singing. It's my day. So join in celebrating NordVPN's 11th birthday by clicking on the link in the description or go to nordvpn.com and use the promo code react to the k to receive not just one month for free, which is the usual deal, but four entire months free in total. It's as if they're saying with this extra gift, wherever you look, only more happiness. <laughs> Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video and happy birthday. You are now reacting to the girl group Red Velvet and their 2022 title track, Birthday. The lyrics to birthday are about returning to the birthday of someone you like and making all their wishes come true while gifting them an unforgettable day. Various references to Red Velvet songs are also hidden in the lyrics. The song is composed by EJ, Cole, Isaac Han, Arum Kim, Ghost Child LTD, Kim Minji, and Lucin Door. The guy who wrote Feel My Rhythm did the sound design for the intro of the music video. Oh, yeah. interesting. All right, I'm ready for an unforgettable birthday. Three, two, one. Oh, I'm ready. Happy birthday. Wow, this is like a movie soundtrack. Oh, Tremolo, suspense. I like this intro, mm. it's like mystical. Keeping oh. this sort of uncanny animal aesthetic <laughs> from <laughs> Feel My Rhythm. Not the same birds. Are they not invited to the birthday party? Did they miss the birthday party? They're mad. Oh, I have chills. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Gershman, what the hell are you doing here, Gershman? Oh, oh, all right. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I love the chopped up Gershwin. Oh, that's so sick. The way they're oh. Ah! Because there's so much space in the instrumental. <laughs> the Gershwin fits in so cute. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of octave leaps. Do, do, do. This one's going well. The vocal harmony, though. I have ice cream cake. Check. <laughs> Swag. Ooh. Oh man, the reverb on that Tom fill. Pre-chorus sounds so warm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, nice little string tremolos are in. <gasps> oh, Ooh, that's, that's a, a big, big cat. cat. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! Nice. Two section free course. Man, I really like the panning of the of the toms and the and the kick. I have no idea where this song is going. Ooh. Hmm. All the sliding stuff's making me think of like ice cream cake sort of chorus production. Right. Whoa. It's so thick. There's like, there's like eight different vocal things of the same note happening. It's that was cool. Ooh, ooh! I like that. Oh, okay, it's back. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> Rip. I love that. I like this because I feel like the harmony of the Gershwin's really supporting what's happening. Exactly, like the chromaticism and whatever, yeah. I, I like how the percussion is more left-handed and like the Gershwin 
like subject that they're doing is in the right side, like right panned. It's kind of interesting. There's so many layers to listen to always. Like, I want to talk during the song, but I know I'm going to miss something. So the drum. That's a good Tom Phil. <laughs> they yeah. made that a lot more interesting. <laughs> This is different. Did we have the riffs in the background for some? <laughs> I love the fall <laughs> off that. It's like not quite pitched. Oh, wow. It's so stark with just those. Oh, break down. The electric guitar in the back is just like really, Ooh. really fuzzed out, super crazy. <laughs> Dude, the, the bells are so good! <laughs> Interesting choice for vocal riff. Ooh! I love that. <laughs> this is so cam. Hmm. <laughs> There's so much going on in the background. Yeah. There's so much movement going on. Big fan. Big fan. So Gershwin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gershwin! <laughs> yes, wait. That's a good place to start. What about the Gershwin piece do you like so much? So, when the blues hit the mainstream, it never really did hit the mainstream. I think that's kind of the whole thing about the blues. But the blues started to get super popular, and it was a primarily like, uh, it was a black um, genre. It was, you know, like in the saloons, it was in the bars, you know, it was, it rose from the people rather than like, you know, the tradition. And so that was a whole thing and everyone was like, oh, and then Gershwin is like learning his craft and he's like in the depths of this scene and he puts out Rhapsody in Blue and it's like scored for an orchestra, but it's using the harmonic language of the blues and gospel and all of this stuff that it was like, really hadn't been done on that scale before. Um, so that's like the history of Rhapsody in Blue, and it's, I don't know, it's sick. I don't know why, but something about the sound of Gershwin, kind of like Tin Pan Alley era music, sampled in like trap pop, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm just like, keep them away, like, keep them apart. <laughs> I, like, I was down for kind of like a retro, kind of like soul, funky, kind of, like you can do that better, but then it was just like straight up pop. And, like, mm. <laughs> I think it is cool how they transformed that snippet like that. from Gershwin into like a little motif throughout the whole song. Mm -hmm. I love the way they used like the material. I love the way the producer uses material because I think that with the melody of like the Gershwin, like the da 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 da, like it's a melody that has like harmonic function in it. So like there's like tonic in it and also predominant. And so like, not only did they use like mostly tonic and predominant like in the actual song, but like most of like the melody just felt like riffing on like yeah. the melody. So it just felt more connected. Mm -hmm. It grooves pretty well, honestly, like um, going into that, the vocal by right after that, they kind of like take the same like shape and then like that's their the first melody they sing so it's like a smooth like transition mm. and everything i thought i think that they were very individualistic with their approach to sampling so they decided to take gershwin and use him his his melody and his harmonies as a starting off point for their own artistic vision and i like that like i thought it was very tasteful and i'm glad they didn't overuse it because like sometimes or at least i'm glad they didn't overuse the same bit because that's what we sometimes hear with classical samples is just like they find two bars of a classical piece and then just try to spin the whole song out of them and it always ends up really boring right um, but it only appeared in the verses right and like i would have kind of liked to hear some other part of Rhapsody in Blue used elsewhere. They could have like put it, actually like went harder with it 
And like in the very last, like I guess the chorus section, like they could have quoted it and maybe like not the very first time of the chorus, but like in the very end, like in,、uh, the last few times. They oh, they could have just. Da, dee, da, dee, da. Or、yeah. is that the piano concerto? Da, dee, da, dee, da, da, da. <laughs> Done that too, and they could have just quoted that same, same thing. This was like <laughs> such a different approach than,、um, than Bach. You know, they、yeah. use like the same small sample from the song, and then use that over and over again, but like in a different way. Yeah,、like、they're not like taking no, they built verbatim like the same way that they did with Bach, where they like literally you could like hear the、um, like the quartet happening in the background. What did you think of their use of Rhapsody in Blue? It was very intriguing from the start. It got me. It had me at the beginning. It actually had me all the way through.、Really? I think that was the most compelling part of the song. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> Doesn't mean it was groundbreaking, but I think I think it was the best part of the song is the verse,、yeah. the rhapsody in blue. I think. Well, I think、cool. it encapsulates 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 yeah, encapsulates the、um, the kind of the feeling of the song, the song, the piece. Okay, we're, if we're talking about Gershwin, Gershwin. the piece. The piece. In the song, because like whenever like Rhapsody Blues like mentioned anywhere, there's like this feeling of like there's like this like I'm about to like, fly. This, yeah, like this like <laughs> I'm about to fly. Like <laughs> I feel like whenever Gershwin like Rhapsody in Blue is like performed anywhere, like it's always like this like crazy thing where like a bunch of other things are just like sort of hodgepodged into it, and it's like this like larger than life thing. And so the fact that like it started off in like this like. Roaring twenties esque like hotel like scene place and then it just went all over the place like that's exactly right.、Mm-hmm. I really like the beat. It's just like everything.、Mm. It's like one gets its own space every time. It's like one, two, and three, and four, and one. Like everything just like gravitates toward it and like settles. That was fun for me. You know, I'm a. I love space and my music. I think it creates like emphasis to like my ears. It's like, okay, what are they gonna do? Like, why is there space? And then they fill up that space in the pre-chorus, and it's just like really well balanced. The toms were really like low and like re- like reverby. Yeah, there was a. They a sound really resonant. Good. Yeah, they're like very produced, but like not a bad way.、Yeah. Um, And I also like that every time there was a tom fill, I feel like it was all I could hear. Like it was super, like it was super loud. It was like da 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 da. Like it was like all you could hear. Like it made, then, it made、yeah. space for it. Oh my god. Yeah, it just gave the the transitions a bit more momentum going into the in the chorus. The chorus, I don't like. There was like so much happening and also like nothing at all. Like I feel like there was probably like four or five different sounds happening, which is like not like a ton. But then they were there was a bunch of like layering happening in the vocals. It was like it sounded like super full. It was almost like overwhelming. But、uh, um, I, I didn't mind it though. No, I liked how they still had the voices in the forefront of the production.、Yeah. Like it, it, it would be so easy for them to get drowned out by everything that was happening. But they really kind of like pushed everything back、mm-hmm. and made the voices the the focus, which I <laughs> I appreciate because、mm-hmm. the instrumental could definitely get distracting with the. <laughs> the, yes. The, the <laughs> sco- the, no, yeah, the, the scooping synth. I liked the vocals and、uh, how the vocals felt and were. I think my biggest issue with the song is just clarity. Like when I listen to a really great song, my ears are able to compartmentalize all the different voices and lines that are going on, and hold them sort of separately, and then also feel how they interact.、Mm. And I think for this song. The voice is the only thing that really does that, and the other things are just sort of a little bit of a mess, kind of tied up over here, and I can't separate them out and then put them back together in my sort of visual space, just because it's a little bit of a, a just mess, I think. Besides the voices, yeah, maybe okay, maybe it's way too full. Oh, so it feels like it's a little bit,、covered. yeah, and it's a bit chaotic, and plus like the harmonic. Stuff in the vocal, it's not matching up. Oh, yeah. With the track. Yeah, 
there are like some some weird notes in there. It's like they try to use like B flat mixolydian with like triadic like movement, and then when it comes comes to E flat seven, it's like all right, we are still doing the like D over D flat. <laughs> if it's on that chord. That's all like both. That's all fine, but like. Like, no, that does not work. <laughs> and then the chorus, it's like. And then it went. And it's like. Like. I kind of like that color change. I like that clash. Really? Yeah. What if we put it closer together? That's what it is. Oh, like the... That was a really good phrase. The da 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 and then da 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 da. I like the melodic phrasing in this. Yeah. Structure. Yeah, that that is that is a super like. I mean, we hear octave leaps in plenty of songs, but like just bouncing up and down the octave, I feel like I don't normally hear that much. You know what I was actually noticing that this is like one of the few groups that you can definitely hear the different timbres of each singer. Like there was some low and there was some like riffy high or some like the like melody kind of sat in like a like a medium high area, but I liked that there was like moments that dipped lower and moments that dipped higher. Especially towards the end, you can kind of hear like the ba da whatever, was like in the lower range, definitely chesty. And then there was someone riffing, riffing like in the background, like higher up. I think another thing adding to how warm it is, is like the melody, the main melody is sitting pretty low for the pre-chorus. Uh, so you get the sort of darker tones in people's voices, but then they have the upper harmonies, so it still sounds full. Um, like it, it's not, is not losing out on harmonies just because there's not as much vocal range beneath the melody. They're just doing those and then they're, those are very soft. So the dominant color is the warmer, deeper voice sound. Yeah. Towards the end, there was like some low voice, lower. Yeah. 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 That was cool. I always appreciate lower voices. Yeah. It's like they, they like they do the riffs in the in the second yeah in the second verse. Wendy! Oh my god, Wendy. that was so nice. There was like lots of nice little clean runs in the background. They were good. B flat major is like a hard. I feel like it's a hard belting key for treble voices because like usually like when you're belting, it's like okay, I'll sing like the high note up or like I'll sing like you know, the fifth or the third, but the fifth or the third's like singing like a high F or a B in like chest. Not chest belting, I guess like belting, but yeah. Just. Yeah. And so that's like, I feel like that's hard for, yeah. yeah. I love how so much of this track felt very alien in sound to like when it comes to expecting what Red Velvet sounds like, but then you just add in those vocal harmonies and you're like, oh yeah, that's Red Velvet. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely feels like they're trying to go back to some of the Dum Dum and the ice cream cake vibes, but I don't think this one reaches those heights. There's a lot of, you know, the bluesy major minor interplay with like the, you know, they do a lot of that and sometimes they have some mixture stuff, which does remind me of the chords of uh, ice cream cake and dum-dum. But the major, major minor interplay is so much more interesting and yeah, palpable in those, where they like, get them, you know, it's major and then they go, and then they go minor. It's like, whoa, all these shades, all these, yeah, different, all these ideas. It's so, it almost clashes. But that's why I like those early Red Velvet. Like they risked really, making our ears like taking our ears on a trip the chorus did feel very red velvet like yeah. the production as i mentioned recalled some ice cream cake with like those because i think it has those weird things up like high things just like <laughs> sliding around this we don't know which mic is alive by the way that's why we're um yeah this song has a fantastic amount of layers that it adventures into territory red velvet hasn't adventured yet but it also uh, covers what we do feel as the comfortable red velvet harmony while also every single time there's returning material there's a little variation like it's everything that I love in an SM song everything that I love in a red velvet song so and each of the sections contrast really well like you have the the verses have a lot of empty space in the in the instrumental and then 
the core the pre-chorus is very smooth and like not percussive until the end and then the chorus is this big sort of hard-hitting wall of sound i guess like what i like about like red velvet doing upbeat stuff is that it's always fun like i feel like sometimes with like other groups it can like feel like when it gets like upbeat and like lively it can feel sort of like the harmony can sort of feel predictable and the melody can sort of feel predictable. I was like, okay, I just don't know what's happening. But I feel like this was like really like interesting and like, this is interesting upbeat. Wait, wow. Red Velvet wrote Rhapsody in Blue. That's right. It is a Red Velvet reference. Did they? I thought that was Gorge Gershwin. <laughs>